Great, thank you so much, Emmanuel. Thank you for introduction and welcome everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. So I'm just going to, I've got uh, slides of the presentation so you'll be able to see all of the slides and hopefully see my face as well. So today I just wanted to, um, to talk to you about stress. Uh, stress is a very big topic, of course, and it's uh, very much on our minds, especially now when we all in this lockdown and some people do actually have um, do feel more stressed and more anxious in this situation uh, but in my opinion we always need to look at the bright side we actually need to find the benefits in this in every situation and i hope today i can show you the benefits and lots of possibilities that you can do now um, that um, hopefully will help you um, so um, let's start with this. So today is all about how we can actually make the stress our friend and how we can use it to our advantage. And of course, we're going to talk about foods and lots of different lifestyle factors. Um, so we have all these scary statistics, of course. Um, we are extremely stressed and we... Um, 73% of us regularly experience psychological symptoms caused by stress. We have 48% um, of us feel uh, that their stress has increased over the past five years. 77% um, of people regularly experience physical symptoms caused by stress. I um, think that already happened. Um, 76% of people cite money and work as their major sources of stress. We also have 48% um, who reported uh, lying awake at night just because of the, the feeling of stress and they can't, it interferes with their sleep patterns. And 87% of workers worldwide are emotionally disconnected from their workplaces and they feel um, less likely to be productive. And 54% said stress had caused them to fight with them and the people that they love, their family, their closest. And um, unhappy workers, of course, we do know it affects our productivity. And yes, the statistics are just horrendous. And we do know that stress is the biggest threat to our workplace health, but it's not just about the workplace. Now we're all at, ho at home and it does, it's, lots of people feel emotional and physical uh, consequences of stress and it shows as physical symptoms and hopefully today we're going to go through things that you can do at home to reduce those negative effects of stress or maybe make yourself stronger so that you don't um, succumb or you don't feel that stress physical effects of stress as much um, there's some, a bit more statistics here um, um, about the uh, exercise is actually the main stress relieving thing that people tend to do. Um, there is also statistics on al alcohol consumption, on um, gambling and drugs use. So this is the majority of the things that people use to cope with stress. But I'm sure there are better ways, I suppose, to, to deal with stress consequences. So what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to look at the how exactly stress happens, what it does to our system, how we produce those stress hormones, what they are, what they do to us, what physical symptoms or what physical things they do to us. We're going to talk about the use of stimulants, of course, it's caffeine and sugar and all of the other things that we use to cope with stress. We're going to talk about negative effects of stress on our health. But I don't want to really focus on that too much. I want to focus on the positive side, as I said. So maybe I can show you the positive side of how stress, how you can use stress um, for your health and well-being. We're going to look at the uh, case reports. I'm going to show you um, what can be done with um, individualized approach to nutri with nutritional therapy. Um, we're going to look at a specific test that tests for our stress response. And we're going to see um, what we do with diet and nutrition and supplements and what results it can achieve. Mm -hmm. 
So what is stress? Yeah, I really like this um, explanation. It's actually the gap between our expectations and reality. And the more um, the gap, the more the stress. So I guess one of the ways of dealing with it is to expect nothing and accept everything. It's just a change of attitude. Mm -hmm. So the adrenal glands are responsible for our stress response. They are located on top of our kidneys. They're really, really tiny um, organ. And they enable your body to deal with stress, either big or small. Our body um, perceives any stress, whether it's physical or emotional, whether it's small or large, in exactly the same way goes into um, a stress response. So the adrenal glands would be the ones that produce the stress response hormones such as cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline. And uh, this is what really happens uh, in, our, um, in our bodies biochemically. So we have the stress and it affects our brain and then the brain, the hypothalamus in the brain produces this hormone, CRH, and then it affects our anterior pituitary gland that produces another hormone which directly acts on adrenal glands to produce cortisol. And then in response to cortisol, all of our body parts and all of our organs respond in a certain way to prepare us for either um, running away or fighting. This is called a flight or fight response. And it happens no matter if the stress is physiological or physical or emotional, the response is exactly the same. So now we probably are under um, emotional stress rather than physical stress. So as an example, physical stress could be something like um, a rapid temperature change, like extreme heat, like sauna, or extreme cold, like cryogenic sauna, or you know, being outside in the winter, that's stress, uh, that will cause our stress to, uh, our body to respond to this stress. And now we probably are more in the emotional or mental stress. So, but the physiological effect will be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So the cortisol hormone is something that acts on all of the body systems to prepare us for stress response. And what it does exactly, mm -hmm. let's have a look. So yeah, this is what normally happens when you get scared or when you prepare to run away or fight this is what happens. Mm -hmm. So what is this flight or fight response that we have? And what kind of actions it does to us? What kind of functions? Uh, first of all, it increases our heart rate and lung action because we need to either fight or run away. So we need that capacity to perform this function very efficiently. Um, we may become pale or we may flush in our face and alternating between the two. Uh, our digestive function is impaired because it's not essential for running away or fighting. We get an increase in blood pressure. This is why high blood pressure is usually linked to stress conditions. Um, again, why do we need high blood pressure? Because we get more blood delivered to all of our extremities, to all of our cells in order for us to get more energy or to produce more energy. Um, we also get um, constriction of certain blood vessels. This is where the blood supply is not essential, such as reproductive organs or digestive organs. They uh, almost get their blood supply reduced because again, these are not essential. And um, we also get dilation of blood vessels from, to muscles. So again, we need our muscles to run. So hence our body would provide more blood in order for us to run better. Um, yeah, so the, the overall uh, effect of cortisol is so wide and it affects every single system in our body. Mm -hmm. And the uh, important things that I wanted to get your attention to um, are actually positive things that cortisol uh, does to our body. Things like, it lowers our sensitivity to pain. 
or it heightens our memory functions. It also gives us a burst of increased immunity. And of course, we do know that immune system is very important nowadays and we need to look after our immune system. And cortisol is very, very essential, I would say, for immune system to function. Mm -hmm. Cortisol also reduces glucose delivery to some tissues and uh, impairs blood flow to stomach and digestive system. And again, that's a really important um, factor to remember. And this is why we do know that, for example, for IBS um, sufferers, stress is a big factor and this is how it's connected. Now, um, the, the cortisol secretion is, uh, is different in every person. Again, we are all very, very different biochemically. And people have biologically, um, people have um, biologically wired um, a response or a different biological, biological response to react to stress. Um, so what things can raise your cortisol production? First of all, viral infections definitely raise your cortisol productions. Uh, not sleeping or staying up late can also raise your cortisol production. Fasting or not eating regularly can do that as well. Obviously, having any type of stress, like um, psychological stress, can also increase cortisol production. Different stimulants such as um, caffeine and nicotine can do that too. Um, even the, as I said before, the change in temperature uh, or even sun or light or different smells can affect some people's cortisol production. So this is how sensitive the system is. But my question is, is stress that bad? We obviously know that some um, stress uh, can be beneficial because, for example, if we work into a deadline and we need this burst of energy and we need to keep that focus and concentration this is when stress actually is very handy because it um it, it has this effect on our system when we can focus better and when we can be very very concentrated on our task and complete it on time but we do know also if the stress is ongoing or chronic or present at all times it may have negative effects on our health. Mm -hmm. uh, but cortisol is actually very essential uh, for, um, uh, for you to function. Uh, we do know that it peaks in the morning. So you're supposed to produce high amount of cortisol in the morning, and this is what wakes you up in the morning. And also it's an indicator of strain. So if you produce too much cortisol, then perhaps some of your actions or your environment is causing that. And it tells you that perhaps it's a little bit too much for you. Maybe you should stop or avoid certain things. So it's a good indicator for you to see how, how things affect you, I suppose. Um, stress, uh, sorry, the cortisol also decreases inflammation. So for example, this happens after a workout when you break down and tear your muscles. This is when you produce cortisol and it reduces inflammation and helps you to heal better. So it is really essential. And again, this is just an overall picture of all of the different health conditions that are linked to this prolonged or chronic stress. Um, and we, in, in our day, in our current situation, I guess the important things would be um, uh, the depression. I see a lot of people react with uh, hypertension, so increased blood pressure is a big one. A decrease in our immune system, again, because it kind of wears out our system to have this cortisol production at the very high levels at all times. And the, it has a negative effect on the immune system. It also has an effect on our hunger. Again, we are at home, we have food supply, perhaps we have a little bit more time if let's say you don't work or um, you, know, you have your kitchen very close and your fridge. Um, so it's, it's more difficult to control your hunger and stress can also negatively affect that. And some people get migraines, um, low energy fatigue, sleep deprivation. 
Um, so these are just some of the negative effects of chronic and prolonged stress on our system. Uh, it also can have, um, it, you know, sometimes I see a lot of um, uh, men in the clinic who are trying to build muscle mass and they can't because they permanently stress. And this is another way how cortisol can actually have a negative effect and break down your muscle mass or prevent you from building up. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for us ladies, I guess, or for, for men as well, it's important to know that it also inhibits our collagen production. So it's, it ages us, but I guess it's not a surprise. Um, it also, uh, when we look at the diet and stress, so we do know that um, prolonged stress can reduce um, or can waste a lot of micronutrients, things like vitamins and minerals, because a, a, a metabolic need um, is increased and me metabolic needs such as nutrient requirements um, are important here. So stress creates additional physiological demands on our body. Um, and it's, um, it's important if you think about if you already had a reduced level of certain micronutrients, for example, vitamin D or um, vitamin C, and then you add that stress on top of it, it can make you really deficient in those nutrients so it exacerbates deficiency of micronutrients and this is really important and this is where we can actually intervene and make sure you do get enough of the micronutrients and these micronutrients in turn can improve your stress sensitivity or increase your stress sensitivity Right, as I mentioned before, uh, lots of people uh, turn to drinking, eating, gambling, um, and there's some statistics about uh, drinking specifically, but I'm sure it's not a surprise that alcohol actually adds an additional layer on our um, metabolism, uh, on the nutrient needs, because when we need to detoxify alcohol from our system, we use a lot of B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin C, and um, other resources that we need for stress response. So this is not really helpful in the long term. And um, we have this opportunity now um, that we are at home. And I think this is the perfect time to actually start looking after ourselves and think about our long term health and perhaps um, deal with certain things like, um, you know, drinking and gambling and overeating i suppose uh, but yeah it's uh, it's a shame that i can't hear you guys and and ask you questions directly but please feel free to text me any questions or your reactions so i can see um i can see q a session in in my window here so i'll be able to respond but how do you cope what do you normally do um, is there anything that you can recommend, suggest that worked for you? Please feel free to share. Right, let's talk about the nutrients. Um, the main um, precursor or something that our body actually uses to produce cortisol, the stress hormone, is cholesterol. And uh, people on cholesterol reducing medication actually have um, or produce less um, uh, hormone, um, less hormones altogether. And there's also, um, there are some studies to show that people who use statins to reduce high cholesterol um, have less production of sex hormones, including cortisol. So these are testosterone for men and estrogen for women. Uh, so it does interfere with our hormonal um, balance i suppose so this is something to keep in mind um, uh, other nutrients that uh, stress response uses a lot are magnesium b vitamins vitamin c essential fatty acids so that's your omega-3 um, protein we know is very very important um, complex carbohydrates and vitamin d this is the sunshine vitamin 
So we're going to look at some of the research studies done on this. And um, I just wanted to show you that actually it's, um, it's scientifically um, supported by a lot of scientific medical research that actually these can make you feel better and these can um, improve your reactivity to stress. Mm -hmm. Right, there are some um, comments there in the chat. Um, yeah, I've used magnesium oil as a gel or magnesium flakes in bars that have helped before. Excellent, That's, that makes perfect sense, yes. And Charlotte says, um, question from a vegan, is there anything specific to watch out for uh, in the stressful times? Uh, yes, Charlotte, there are a lot of things to watch out for and I'll go through them. Um, mindfulness. Uh, so Keith says mindfulness helped him even five ten minutes shortly after getting up does help me to take things more calmly brilliant this is really good um, keep them coming guys um, right so let's see what we have here um, this is how our body makes cortisol so this is the whole pathway and I just wanted to show you how many different nutrients the body actually needs in order to get this done properly. So you can see there is vitamin B5 somewhere here. It acts as a cofactor. Vitamin B3 is obviously essential to make this reaction happen. And people on um, cholesterol reducing medication, they actually have this HMG coenzyme A reductase this reaction blocked completely. So you can see they don't produce cholesterol. But don't forget, we use cholesterol to produce our sex hormones. And this is where the cortisol is. So lower down. Um, right, let's start with omega-3. Uh, this is the essential fatty acids. I'm sure you all know about oily fish and how good it is for us. And uh, yes, talking about vegan diet, um, it, it is important to have um, omega-3. If you, uh, obviously you don't eat oily fish, oily fish is considered to be the best source of omega-3 fatty acids. But vegan sources, are um, the, uh, you can have um, chia seeds, walnuts, um, there's flaxseed oil, there's obviously you can have flax seeds just ground, added to your meals. So any plant sources of omega-3 um, are useful and they're really good, but keep in mind that the, um, the conversion rate, uh, basically we need to make the omega-3 as long as possible. So to get the DHA and EPA form of omega-3. And you don't get those from plant sources. You get a very short, kind of chained omega-3 from, from plant sources. In order to make them longer, our body needs to make that conversion. And the conversion rate is estimated very low, some, somewhere between five to 10%. So this is something to keep in mind for vegans. Um, but again, there are vegan, a lot of vegan um, supplements available on the market now, such as algae oil is a very good source of omega-3 long chain uh, fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So again, the question from Charlotte, um, uh, I have some omega supplements derived from seaweed. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. So algae or seaweed is, is definitely going to help. Um, so what I wanted to show you from this study specifically is that um, uh, this was done on the, um, specifically to measure biological stress symptoms with omega-3. So they basically checked the omega-3 fatty acid levels and how our body reacts to stressors. And for people who had low levels of omega-3 in their blood, didn't react that well. So they were more reactive, more sensitive to stressors. Mm -hmm. uh, so something to keep in mind. So this is really important. And I guess one of the most important nutrients to um, make sure that we get enough from our diet um, in order to you know, strengthen ourselves in the stressful time. So these are just some of the examples of um, you know, the exact um, quantities, um, I would say. So EPA and DHA are the long chain omega-3 source, uh, omega-3 forms, and they only come from 
uh, oily fish or animal sources. Um, we need at least, we've seen the beneficial effect of uh, about 3.5 grams per week. So for comparison, uh, if we need to have 3.5 grams per week, we need to have 20 grams of chia seeds that would provide you with that amount. Um, a whole pack, 175 grams of walnuts can do it for you, or just 92 grams of pilchards. So these are sardines, basically, tinned sardines. Sardines are considered to be uh, one of the highest sources of um, omega-3 fatty acids. So again, if you try and we only seen the beneficial effect starting at this dosage. Anything under it doesn't make any difference at all, but anything um, above 3.5 grams per week adds to the benefit. So I guess with omega-3 fatty acids is the more the better really. Mm -hmm. But definitely make sure that you get your 3.5 grams per week. Now there's another one, um, another very important nutrient is vitamin D, obviously. Um, again, a scientific study to show that uh, vitamin D promotes um, homeostasis is basically the balance in our body and longevity via the stress response pathway. And here they actually did their research based on the DNA. They looked at what exactly vitamin D does to our DNA in order to reduce that stress sensitivity. So I found this was a fascinating research. So if you have free time, you can uh, find this study and have a look um, as well. So vitamin D, uh, what are the numbers? We really need to test and we need to really see if a person is deficient or has optimal level of vitamin D in blood. We do know as a country in the UK here, the uh, the deficiency of vitamin D is prevalent. It's, um, I don't have statistics in my head, but it was, it was very widespread, especially at this time of the year when we just finished winter and, you know, sun is not yet in the, in the right angle to, for us to produce vitamin D. Plus we locked indoors. So if you get a chance to get out, do get out and maybe sit on the balcony or you know, try to get sunshine on your skin. This is the best way to produce, uh, to get vitamin D. Um, but if you can't, then I would suggest you test first to determine how low or how high your levels are. Because again, if you're not deficient and you're taking more vitamin D as a supplement, that's not necessarily the best thing to do uh, because you can get vitamin D toxicity. Um, so I would start with the test always. Mm. But then again, the, um, the vulnerable uh, or uh, people with low immune system are recommended to supplement anyways. So the uh, standard supplement is 25 micrograms per day or 1,000 uh, international units per day. So this is the, usually what uh, comes as a supplement. Um, the food sources, you can get a vitamin D from food, um, especially if, say, uh, it was a free range chicken and uh, they've been exposed to sun. Some of the vitamin D accumulates in the yolk of the eggs. So yolks can be uh, a source of vitamin D. Fatty fish, again, if it was swimming in the sea and got sunshine, um, vitamin D accumulates in the fat layer of the fish. So that's another way how to get that. Um, I've also seen in supermarkets, they sell um, vitamin D enriched mushrooms. So I'm not sure how they do that, but it does work. Um, it provides you with um, your daily requirement for vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this slide actually shows you um, all of the other important nutrients and their sources um, on something that I would perhaps focus on when we talk about diet that actually supports our stress response. So we do know that uh, eating enough protein is important. And again, perhaps it's a factor for vegan uh, diets. Um, I wouldn't, um, as long as you have some kind of um, protein source, a vegan protein source, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So I don't think you need to take any additional protein powders. Um, so the good sources would be your tofu, your um, soybeans, um, 
your legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, um, any legumes, lentils are very good sources. A lot of vegetables actually also provide um, uh, enough protein. Uh, so there is a question from Keith again, just to clarify, just to clarify, recommended protein is one gram per kilo body weight per day, not one gram per kg at each meal, correct? Yes, you are correct. It's per day, yes. Sorry, I should have put it in there. Um, so let's say if you're 70 kilos, you would only need about 70 um, grams of protein per day. And that's divided by three meals. That's kind of easy to, to achieve. Um, second one would be essential fats, uh, which we discussed. So that's your omega-3. Uh, there are other fats that are also very important, so things like uh, monounsaturated fatty acids. So these, are, these come from olive oil, for example. So use a lot of uh, good type of fats um, and olive oil is good for dressing of your salads or dressing already cooked vegetables. Um, even, I would even say uh, we do need um, some saturated fat because this, is, um, also, this also helps us to produce our steroid hormones such as cortisol. So don't be scared of the fat, I would say, as long as it's a good quality, obviously. Uh, fat. Um, now, fiber is really good as well. Um, I would normally recommend to aim for half of your plate for your lunch and for dinner uh, covered with vegetables that grow above the ground. So these are non-starchy vegetables because these are the most concentrated sources of micronutrients, things like your vitamin C and your B vitamins and your magnesium and so many other nutrients as well. So these are the most nutrient dense foods. And this is one of the ways how you can make sure that you get enough of those. Um, if we do know the government uh, recommends us to have five portions of fruit and vegetables per day, but actually what we've seen from the studies now, we do need a lot more than that. And now is a good opportunity because now we all have more time. We don't have to rush to work. I guess some, uh, some people still have to, to go to work, um, but the majority of us are staying at home and now we have the time to cook and make, um, um, you know, make sure that we get enough of the goodness in our diet. So I would focus on vegetables as well and try to consume different colors vegetables and also about, I would say, seven to 10 portions would be would be uh, great if you could aim for. And one portion of vegetable uh, equals 80 grams. So um, that would probably be like a couple of florets of broccoli or cauliflower. And then if you talk about uh, leafy green vegetables uh, and like a salad bag of spinach, because of the volume, it's, it's going to be, it, to be a large portion. So the whole bag is about 80 grams. Mm -hmm. And next one to focus on would be complex carbohydrates. Of course, this is where our body gets the energy from because we digest and absorb carbohydrates as simple glucose molecules. Uh, but the speed with which we digest and absorb really matters. Um, if, we, if we have sugary snacks, chocolates, cakes, anything like that, we absorb it very fast. And it, you know, the, the sugar uh, from that sugary snack hits our blood and creates a spike of glucose in the blood. And this is also linked to a stress response, believe it or not. This sugar spike or glucose spike also causes us to have a stress response and produce cortisol which is not what we need right now. Mm -hmm. There's another question from Charlotte. I am confused about polyunsaturated fats. Can you explain their role? Um, yes, so polyunsaturated fats um, include omega-3, omega-6. These are essential because we do not, we can't produce them. We have to get it from our diet. And uh, the role in stress response is because we need those fats in order to produce 
it's it's a raw material for hormone production, including cortisol. So if you don't have enough of those omega-3 fatty acids or polyunsaturated fatty acids, you kind of put in your body under additional stress because your body is scavenging, trying to find the raw materials to produce stress, to produce cortisol, and it can't because it doesn't have enough. So it does affect um, the level of cortisol that you produce. Um, did I explain everything correctly? Let me know if you if you have any more questions. Um, okay, so next one uh, would be magnesium. And we do know that we waste a lot of magnesium when we have a stress response. Um, so these would be the best sources. Um, vitamin C is essential for stress response because our adrenals use it as a cofactor to produce cortisol. B vitamins, this is probably the most important and the first thing that I would supplement um, for someone who is very, very stressed. And we already talked about vitamin D. Um, okay, let's move on. This uh, is a good guideline, which is produced by um, our professional organization, um, BAND. Um, and this is how I would look at every plate, just to make sure that, that you're getting enough of the nutrients. It's just a really, really good guideline, I suppose, to make sure you, you get healthy meals, healthy balanced meals. So you can see half of your plate is covered with vegetables. So you have quarter is your leafy greens and salad. So non-starch vegetables. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, no, half of the plate is non-starch vegetables. And then quarter of your plate where it says root vegetables and whole grains. So this is your starchy um, sources or carbohydrate sources. It includes potatoes and all different root vegetables such as carrots and beetroot and sweet potato and celeriac and swede. And so anything that grows underground is considered starchy vegetable. And I would also put legumes in there because legumes also provide you with um, complex carbohydrates. But for in vegan diets, legumes actually provide proteins and carbohydrates. They also contain a lot of fiber, so they're really good overall. And then the quarter of your plate, as you can see, is covered with protein. So again, just make sure that you have a little bit of protein with your every meal that you have in, just for better blood sugar regulation. Plus, we do know that we need to get enough protein in our diet for um, optimal stress response. Mm -hmm. Right, this is just some of the examples of how I'm thinking when I'm thinking about my daily meals. I'm thinking I need to have my fiber, my protein, and my healthy fat. These are the three things I focus on and I prioritize. For example, so I'll have for breakfast, I'll have eggs with two vegetables. So eggs would be my healthy fat and protein, and vegetables would be my fiber. Uh, for lunch, it's almost always I have a very big vegetable salad and I add a little bit of protein to that. So again, vegan diets, could you could add chickpeas, um, uh, hummus, um, tahini goes really nice, um, legumes, uh, or even, uh, you know, soya beans or any other type of beans. Uh, for dinner, again, we're thinking about protein. So I usually have oily fish because, again, it covers my essential fatty acids, my omega-3s and my protein at the same time. And I make sure that I add two vegetables on the side. Um, okay, uh, next one. Um, another example, again, breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. Uh, again, if you're thinking about, okay, Yes, we all like a little bit of sweet and maybe chocolate and some naughty things to snack on, especially now. Uh, it, it's, it's more difficult. I find it, even for myself, it's more difficult to stay more disciplined with, with the snacks, especially. But I would say, if you think like that, so I need to get my, um, my targets first, first 
I almost always find by the time I get all of my daily targets of my vegetables and proteins and fats, there's no space for anything else. If I really, really desperately want to have an ice cream, then I'll have an ice cream, but only after I complete all of my goals, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last one, uh, last example. So this is a vegan um, menu. Um, again, if you're thinking about um, in the same kind of um, parameters, uh, fiber, protein, healthy fats, you can make a really nice green smoothie where you can put lots of different things like a little bit of avocado, lemon, maybe a little bit of frozen fruit, some green leafy vegetables. So that covers most of the requirements for the day. And then soup is always a good idea, I guess, vegetable soup. Um, and then uh, for dinner, I would make something like you can see on the picture here. Uh, so just a blend of different mix of different legumes. So you can see soybeans there, uh, lentils, uh, chickpeas. And you can add that, you can make that for a whole week and just add it to your salads or to your main meals. And uh, nuts are a really good source of the, um, uh, the fats. First of all, they, provides, they also provide protein and they also provide magnesium and Brazil nuts provide selenium. So all of these nutrients that are important for stress response. Mm -hmm. So nuts are always a good idea, I would say. Mm -hmm. And again, if you just think about nutrient density, so everything that you, you have in front of you on your plate, think about, is it giving me nutrients? Is it giving me, is it helping me to fight the stress? Is it, is it healthy for me? Is it good for my body? And if your answer is yes, then yes, eat it. But if your answer is no, perhaps it's just the treat that you can leave for later and prioritize other foods instead. Mm -hmm. um, have any of you heard of adaptogens and what they can do to support stress response? And have any of you used it, uh, used them? Mm -hmm. um, please let me know in the, um, in the question section. So just wanted to tell uh, you about adaptogens. We use them in clinic quite a lot. And um, they do have a fair amount of research done on them and mostly positive and beneficial research. We do know that they can increase the state on, we call it non-specific resistance in stress and decrease our sensitivity to stressors. Uh, someone actually compared it to exercise that we do for our muscles. Um, so first of all, when you do exercise for the first time, it actually uh, breaks down your muscles and it causes pain and causes stress. But the more you do it, the better you become at it. So this is exactly how adaptogens work for your stress response. They balance it out, make it better. Okay, there is um, a comment from Charlotte. Heard of them, but nervous of using without professional advice. You are absolutely right, yes. I wouldn't try any of them on your own without actually knowing your stress response situation, I would say. And I'll show you the test that you can do in order to see where you are on the scale. And depending on where you are, we would then prescribe adaptogens specifically to either reduce cortisol or increase cortisol at a certain time of the day as well. Um, are they toxic long-term potentially? Yes, they can be. Um, I wouldn't say toxic, but I would say um, non-beneficial, yes. And sometimes perhaps not advisable. Uh, you can't use them for a very long time. Uh, some of the um, adaptogens have a potential side effects. If you're not using them properly, they will have side effects. They can increase blood pressure, cardiovascular risk, and some other things. So you have to be careful with them and only use if advised by a health professional. So yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. And some of the examples of adaptogens that we use in clinic uh, that you probably heard of uh, are Siberian Jingzen, um, the medicinal mushrooms, especially this um, 
cordyceps uh, mushrooms that's very popular now and lion's mane they are used as nootropics as well so something that actually uh, has the specific a specific effect of either um, you know reducing certain function or improving certain function mm -hmm. rhodiola is very uh, widely used for stress response and usually you take that before going to bed so it kind of makes you relaxed and calm if you're in a very wired stage of your stress response for example and GABA um, is a very interesting compound that is available from supplements as well, but you can also get it from foods. Um, what it does, it, it actually reduces the secretion of that hormone that stimulates uh, the production of your cortisol and of the whole of the um, uh, pathway that you, we saw earlier in the presentation. So it reduces your cortisol production if this is what you really need to reduce. Some people benefit from reducing cortisol. Some people actually need a bit more cortisol. So we need to stimulate cortisol production. Again, depending on where you are on the scale. So interestingly, um, what I saw that natural sources of GABA, they include fermented milk products. And I'm thinking that's probably because of the, um, the whole um, gut bacteria effect on our stress response. Um, interestingly, what we've seen, uh, the emergence of um, a lot of research is looking into how exactly our gut bacteria um, regulates our stress response. Um, it's only the beginning of the research, but we already have on the market, we already have certain probiotic uh, capsules that uh, claim to reduce our stress or reduce our stress response. And that's, um, that's really interesting. Uh, I find it really, really interesting. I think it does make sense. So this article looked into um, how our stress and gut microbiota are connected completely. So they looked at all of the different mechanisms. So, and in conclusion, they found that the influence of stress on gut microbiota and gut microbiota on stress is clear for a lot of different stressors. So it's a bi-directional communication. When we stressed, it affects our gut uh, bacteria and Likewise, our gut bacteria can affect how we experience stress. And I find it really fascinating. So we do know that actually certain types of probiotics um, uh, are helpful. And if looking from, again, the dietary point of view, I would suggest that um, absolutely inclusion of fermented foods and probiotic foods is, is very helpful. Um, there are um, there are certain types of bacteria that we don't really know yet um, but we do know that the beneficial bacteria that comes from fermented vegetables and fermented food compounds they have some kind of calming effect on us so we do know that gut bacteria produces certain uh, we call them metabolites certain compounds that actually tell our brain how to feel and how to behave and I find this fascinating, very powerful. So definitely try, if you've never tried uh, fermented products uh, before, uh, I, would, I would invite you to try and make them yourself. There's lots of um, uh, resources online. Um, you can start with sauerkraut, which is very, very easy. You just need to shred some cabbage, put it in salty water, underweight, and let it ferment for several days. It changes the taste of the cabbage completely. I personally love it, but because I come from Ukraine, we had it um, in our traditional diet for a very long time. Um, it depends again where, where you come from. Um, every, um, and every culture has some kind of fermented products we do know about Japanese culture, they use miso everywhere, and that's another example of fermented um, 
a product of fermented food. We know kimchi is very famous um, in um, Korea and kombucha is of course fermented green tea and we know kefir comes from Russia so try try see what you like mm -hmm. but it, it may have a beneficial effect. Mm -hmm. Um, now let's talk about some of the um, uh, dietary, um, some of the lifestyle strategies actually that have been shown to lower your stress response. I've got one more question that I think I missed um, from Cecilia. I have omega fish oil. What's best way to take a dressing for food or take directly? Um, it doesn't matter as long as you take it. I would say uh, fish oil is, if, if it's not in a capsule, it's not very pleasant tasting. So I would say take it as a supplement because if you just use it as a dressing on food, you may make your food a little bit fishy. If you don't mind that, then it's fine. But a lot of people don't like the fishy taste and fish oil is concentrated fishy taste. Mm -hmm. um, right lifestyle strategies um there's so many things that you can do now and it depends what you like yourself um i invite you to explore and to see you know lots of people use mindfulness meditation yoga we know about all of these things uh, there's plenty of resources online now i know that um, a lot of um, paid apps meditation apps actually opened um, their content for free now uh, you get a lot of yoga sessions online that you can use for free, meditation classes, anything, mindfulness classes, everything's available online, everyone's doing free sessions um, nowadays, uh, which is great. Um, if you never tried uh, dancing classes, again, this is something you, you may want to try and uh, see, see how that actually helps you feel or makes you feel. Uh, we do know that positive social encounters um, help us uh, reduce our stress and anxiety. Uh, again, uh, reach out to some of the friends that you've not, you haven't spoken for a while. Um, and that's, um, that's been proven beneficial by scientific research. Um, maybe have um, you know, online calls with them, or video calls. Um, uh, laughing therapy or just simply watching comedy has been shown scientifically again to reduce our stress response. Exercising in nature, while we're still allowed to exercise, try and get out and do it outside in the park. Of course, try to stay away from people and uh, comply with all of the government advice. Um, the breathing technique. There are lots of different types of breathing that you can do that actually have been shown to reduce your cortisol production immediately. So it has immediate effect. This is how powerful deep breathing techniques are. And uh, again, you can find something that you, you may try. I really like box breathing. So it basically you count to four when you're inhaling you pause for count to four. You exhale, counting to four. And again, you pause for four. So it's four, 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 four. And you do 10 of those and your stress response will be gone completely. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a question from Theresa. Oh, what is the best strategy to build a healthy lifestyle into a ritual? Hmm. That's a good question. Best strategy to build a healthy lifestyle into a ritual. I would say take one thing from the list and schedule it into your day. Do it like a new habit. You know that you have to complete a new habit every day for 21 days before it becomes second nature, hopefully. So just make yourself do it, schedule it in your day and get reminders put in your phone and uh, yeah we all have time for it or make sure you have time for it um, and just do it every day and that's the that's the best way to get it um to make it your lifestyle 
uh, don't overwhelm yourself. Just do perhaps one or two things, no more than that. And then when you get to a certain level, you're happy with where you are, then you can introduce another thing. Okay, um, so I'm not going to go through all of the list here. You can have a look yourself as a lot of different things you, you see. I'm going to look uh, show you some of the research studies of um, certain things uh, that were very surprising to me even. Um, sleep. Now we have time, hopefully some people do. And, and it's the best thing you can do for sleep, uh, for, for stress response. Um, we do know that being outside or exposing yourself to sunlight or daylight actually helps with our sleep. We do know about trying to block out the blue light several hours before you go to sleep does help us sleep. So basically what I'm trying to say here, stress does interfere with our sleep. Where can we interfere in that process to affect that stress? We can make sure we sleep better and we can make sure we do all of these things that make us sleep better. And that in, in effect, as a, as, a, as a result will affect how we tolerate stress. You see what I mean? So we're building ourselves up, up here and that in response will reduce our stress sensitivity. It's a question from Keith. Um, can you recommend a website or other sources of healthy recipes that are child-friendly and no meat or low meat? Ooh, Keith, I'll have to come back to you on that. Yes, there are certainly lots of websites. Um, keep the question here. I will, I'll reply to you when we finish the session, if that's okay. Um, what I found that what helps me with sleep is to have um, Epsom salt or magnesium flakes bath before going to bed. I sleep like a baby. I don't even wake up and I feel fantastic in the morning. Some people get really well with supplemental magnesium, so which also helps them to relax. Um, valerian is another herb that is used for sleep. Certain aromatherapy, um, you know, you can get essential oils, several drops into the, um, mm, I forgot the name of this uh, machine that, evaporates um, steam and you can leave it during the night so that this and then you put several drops of specific oils that you like into this machine and basically fills the air in your bedroom with the smell of the oils and that also helps you sleep mm -hmm. diffuser that's right thank you charlotte mm -hmm. okay um Right, who have heard of oxytocin? So this is another very, very powerful thing that you can actually do that reduces your stress response immediately. Research has been done and it has shown to be very beneficial and very effective. So oxytocin is a, is a hormone that we produce and it can induce stre anti-stress-like effects such as reduction of blood pressure and actually reduction of cortisol levels immediately. So what I have here for you is the oxytocin exercise. And what we need to do to produce oxytocin is very simply just hug someone because it's a, it's a hugging hormone. If, if hopefully you have someone to hug next to you, with you, if you don't, Research also has shown that um, actually having a pet and petting the pet produces oxytocin in both in you and in your pet. And the pioneer of this research was uh, Paul Zuck, and he actually recommended eight hugs per day uh, for therapeutic effects on stress. Um, yes, yeah, so I just uh, explained about the pets as well. Um, so as it comes from another research that oxytocin levels actually peak significantly in both your dog and um, yourself when the owner strokes or caresses the dog. And it applies to cats and to all of the different animals as well. 
Right. Another interesting research is um, power posing. Um, what, um, wh who started all of this was Beyonce. Uh, when, she, when she goes on stage, she feels stressed, I guess, like all of us. And what helped her to overcome this was her power posing. She, if you, if you remember, or if you want to check, when she comes on stage, she adopts this specific position of a powerful position, and that immediately reduces your stress hormones. I find this so fascinating. It's just really hard to believe, but it does work. Again, they've measured it, they've done the research and it's all published in the scientific medical journals. Mm -hmm. um, a question from Teresa, a share to earlier question, uh, the first children's cookbook, oh yes, it's the response to Keith's question. Thank you, Teresa. Um, yeah, so even I use this power posing when I do my presentations. If I have to go on stage, of course, I'm going to feel the effects of stress. I can feel the physical effects of cortisol. My heart starts beating very fast. I may start sweating. I may forget the words. But when I get on stage, if I adopt this power posing for myself, and it can be anything, you know, every sportsman has its own their own power posing um, find something that works for you find the position that makes you feel powerful and strong and confident and that should do the trick mm -hmm. um, yeah so this is one of the research papers that i looked at um, that shows that uh, a person can by assuming two simple one minute poses um, body power and instantly become more powerful. Um, does it say, yes, it does talk about decreases in cortisol, elevations in testosterone and feeling of power. So it works. This may not be relevant for our situation now, uh, but this is the whole, uh, the whole science of um, Shinrin Yoku, which is a Japanese um, um, science, I suppose. So it's a forest bathing. Uh, Japanese believe that um, going around and hugging the trees has beneficial effect on stress. And again, this has been studied and it has been shown to be very beneficial. If you happen to go outside in the park, maybe you can find the tree, maybe you can um, get the benefits from interaction with the tree. I suppose you can try that. Uh, but also home plants um, have been shown to have very similar effect. So um, basically any time you spend in the nature among trees or among plants, whether you know, even in your, in your small garden or even on your balcony does have this beneficial effect. Uh, another very powerful thing that I found was music. Um, and there are a couple of studies I wanted to share um, that effect of music on the human stress response. Listening or to the, of the music that you actually like very much has the psychobiological um, effect on your stress. So it affects your autonomic nervous system and uh, also your endocrine stress response. And what they mean by that, it changes your hormonal response to stressors, which is, again, very powerful. Uh, the, um, these findings that they um, reported in the study, um, they hoped that a it makes people, it makes scientific community better understand how exactly music helps with stress response. But they actually did some biological testing here to see how it does, because nobody can still understand how exactly it happens, but it, it is, it does happen. Mm -hmm. So find something that you like, put it in your earphones, give yourself 
10, 15, 20 minutes and see how it makes you feel. Um, now, um, there was another study that actually clarified some findings. So if you listen into music and you are in the group of people that automatically has stress reduction effect. But if you listen into music and you're on your own, you only get a stress reduction effect if you had an intention to reduce your stress. So always have an intention that this music is for a purpose of my benefit, of reduction of stress and my enjoyment. If you have this before you listen to music or during listening to music, it reduces your stress response, which I find, again, fascinating how powerful that can be. Mm -hmm. Another one, this is literally, you can fake it until you make it. If you feel down, anxious, stressed, depressed, whatever, all of the negative emotions, try and smile and actually make yourself smile as much as you can and as often as you can. And that, believe it or not, that actually produces certain chemicals that reduce your stress response and make you feel better. This is just crazy. Um, you can even watch things like, um, I don't know, funny cat movie or funny cat videos or dog videos, something that makes you happy. Whatever makes you smile will work. Um, another interesting thing was um, the, uh, the technique of reframing uh, your reaction to stress. And there is a really fantastic video on, um, uh, on YouTube. Sorry, no, I think it's on TED, one of the TED Talks, uh, which had over, I think, over 16 million views last time I checked. Um, I'll show you. Um, this is the one. Um, it's how to make stress your friend. So she is a um, psychologist who researches stress and negative effect on health. What she found um, was unbelievable. Uh, they conducted a research, an experiment uh, of when people were under stress and um, they uh, reported negative effect of the stress. So if people believed that this stress is going to damage their health, it did damage their health. But when people believed that stress is beneficial to them, it challenges them, it makes them better, it's something to overcome, it was beneficial for them. And this is just changing how you think of the stressor or of the stress. So here is exactly how you need to think. So the, it's called cognitive reframing. It's a method of looking at things in ways that create less stress and promote a greater sense of peace and control. So changing the way you look at something changes your experience of it. See a negative event as a learning experience or a challenge to overcome. So for example, take this situation we're all in now. Yes, it may be upsetting, it may be negative, it may be very depressing for some people, um, but we can't change it. What you can change is how you react and how you think about this situation think about it as a learning experience. You actually have an opportunity now. You have more time. You, you can look after your health better. You can improve your diet. You can do fitness exercises every day, just following online courses. You can learn new things. You can finally do something that you always wanted to do. You can learn new language. You can do so many things. It's actually an opportunity. It, so look, try to find positive sides to this story, to this situation. And that automatically will remove that negative stress effect that you may experience. 
So if you want to look further into this, so I recommend to watch this video and she talks you through the whole process and it's uh, really, really useful. I find it really useful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip through um, this because I think we overrun uh, already with our time. Um, and I just wanted to quickly show you the, uh, the test that you can do. Um, so it's, um, it's a saliva test and it's a um, it looks into your hormones, uh, your stress hormones, so your cortisol and your DHEA, which is another hormone that involved in the stress response. And um, basically you uh, spit in the tube four times per day and you can then see how much cortisol you had in your saliva at those four times per day. So this was a real client. Um, she was very tense, very wired, very easily upset. She was in pain, she had poor digestion and she had chronic fatigue. Um, so the, um, we tested her because of course we didn't know where to look. Should we look at the digestion first? Should we look at the diet first? What is the problem? Where is the problem? Um, and this is how, um, what the results were. So her cortisol levels are supposed to be under nine or between 2.68 and 9.30. So she's supposed to actually be here in the green zone. If she goes into the yellow zone, it's okay, depending on the rest of the picture, but it may not be optimal but her result was actually 19. It was off the chart completely. I don't think I've ever seen the result that high. So she constantly produced so much cortisol that she was exhausted from, from just producing that cortisol. All of her strengths, all of her body functions worked just to make that cortisol. Um, so she was very, very sensitive to stressors. Um, she would be very, very easily upset and very tense about anything or everything that surrounds her. So this is exactly the classic example I'm talking about when you have very high sensitivity to stressors. And as you can see, her second uh, cortisol reading was also very high and third and so on. And of course, when you have cortisol that high, you can't go to sleep. It will affect your sleep. Cortisol is something that energizes you. As we saw earlier, cortisol actually makes you want to fight or run and prepares your body for this physical challenge. How can you go to sleep like that? You can't. Of course, she, she couldn't even sleep. So a lot of things that could be done um, uh, with diet and supplements here to, to reduce that cortisol production. This is exactly the case when we want to reduce cortisol production. Um, we know that fasting or skipping meals increases cortisol, so she wasn't allowed to do that. So this is, uh, this is the case when we actually recommend to have five small meals per day. So no fasting at all, no missing meals, no stimulants, no physical exercise at all, because that's another source of cortisol. Um, of course, we focused on trying to get her to sleep, um, get her early nights, all of the calming activities, um, protein with each meal, absolutely, to just try and even out her blood sugar, um, mega doses of vitamin C, uh, B vitamins and magnesium. This is when we use some of the adaptogens, uh, ashwagandha and rhodiola. Um, we also used um, something that's called L-ornithine uh, because it decreases serum cortisol level. Uh, again, it, that's a supplement, basically. It's, it's, it's an amino acid um, that works on the stress response. So we used a lot of different tools that were specifically to address high cortisol. So when you get that cortisol back to normal or at least you know temporarily this is when you kind of get your body into a healing mode because she needed to heal of course and then you can start working with the stressors with the physical or emotional stressors that of course were present as well and mm -hmm. um, why we need to address this uh, we want to stay here this is where homeostasis is 
when someone has acute stress, they go into here. This is their stress response. This is their cortisol. But we have resistance. If this stressor or period of time is not that long, we can go back to, to normal, to balance. What we don't want is to have chronic stress to carry on for a long time. And this is what can happen. Collapse, exhaustion or failed adaptation. So we're trying to prevent this situation. And this can be done with obviously working with the stressors, your diet, your lifestyle, and um, yeah, lots of things that can help. Mm -hmm. Low cortisol though is also not great. This is when you, your immune system becomes weak. And this is when you actually feel like you constantly have cold and flu and you also feel fatigued and weak. Um, so, and that, that could be due to insufficient cortisol production. It will also affect your emotional well-being at this, uh, at this stage. So as long as you try to avoid a very, very high cortisol production at um, prolonged time and low cortisol production, you know, you should be fine. You should be in that green zone. Then your stress response is healthy. Mm. but when you have your cortisol at the very good optimal levels this is when you can actually learn how to use that cortisol uh, for your advantage for things that you really need to um, perform best at because it helps you perform better both at home and in your work and in your daily life mm. So how can you protect yourself? So this is the last slide, um, which is just some of the ideas, again, taken from previous slides, maybe things to remember. And even if, you, even if you take just one thing, and as I said, try and incorporate it in your daily life, it will have beneficial effect for sure. So think about different uh, things. Maybe try to remember activity you enjoy doing as a child, and maybe start a new hobby. And maybe that will take your mind off things and make you busy and happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, do watch that video about reframing your response to stress. I find that really beneficial. And that helps the majority of clients. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of resources that you can um, search for. Uh, several books that I recommend. Uh, very interesting. This one, Why Zebras, um, Zebras Don't Get Ulcers we know high stress can cause ulcers. Zebras don't get them because they know how to control their stress. Mm -hmm. So the whole book is about that, how we can do that as well. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, I am going to stay here for a while. So happy to answer any questions. And if you wanted to have a private question, you can always uh, email me, it's my email address. And well, thank you so much for, um, for your attention. And um, yeah, I hope you have a nice rest of the day. Um, thank you so much, Olga. I think there were so many key takeaways on my side and I, I hope that um, our members also um, jotted down a few notes on what they're gonna change or adopt um, now that we know a little bit more about the science of stress and how to effectively manage it. Um, for everyone watching, thank you for staying with us as we have ran a little bit. Um, we'll be posting the video on our digital content on the members portal. So if you've missed any of it, feel free to check it out. Also, please join the community forum. Um, we'll be discussing our programs. So if you want to exchange ideas, feedback and thoughts on today's event, um, please do so there. Um, and then we'll be circulating um, Olga's contact details in case you want to follow up with her, as well as um, some of the references that Olga mentioned today, including that TED video that I think is quite an inspiration for us um, during these stressful times. If we can make it work to our advantage, we definitely should. Um, Thank you so much for everyone. Um, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to close the meeting. But of course, um, we can follow up offline either through Olga with Olga directly or through program at the .com. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.